Hello guys. So this is my favorite thing to talk about in poetry, assonance and consonance. Now I didn't learn about these things until high school, but I didn't truly understand how important they were for poetry until after high school, when I started to listen to more rap songs and realized that this is what makes rap and really musical poetry so great. It's the assonance and the consonants. So I'm super excited that I get to teach you guys this right now in seventh grade when you have so much time to practice with it and really enjoy it. So assonance is my favorite figurative language besides it being the word that you come the closest to saying a bad word. What assonance actually means is it's the repetition of a vowel sounds within a line of poetry. So the example below try as I might, the kite did not fly. So the vowel sound is that long I sound. It's spelled sometimes with Y, sometimes with I's, but it repeats. And this makes it musical in a way without having to rhyme. Because if you remember, rhyme it has to have the end and it has to be the same vowel and consonant sound. With this, if you just focus on the vowel sound, you can have that vowel appear at the end, the beginning, in the middle of a word, but then it connects all those words together. So it makes sure in your notebook that you've written down this definition for assonance as we move on. Okay. So now I want you guys to try finding assonance in this stanza of poetry. The poem is called I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth, um, another poet with a great name. If your name's Wordsworth, you should be a poet. Okay, so I'm specifically asking you to look for the long O and the long E assonance. Here we go. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, besides the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Okay, so if you would like, pause the video here to look for assonance. In about five seconds, I'm gonna move on to the answers. Okay, so the first long O's that I was looking at was a host of gold and deaf bodils. Okay, and that line all together, you see that. Assonance, usually you want at least two, two to three in a row that are close enough, enough together to make that assonance. Now we can also then go back and find some long O's with lonely and floats. If those were the only ones in the poem, it would be a harder case to make that the poet purposefully wanted that to be assonance or that it made a connection. But because there's three more in a line below, I think you can also count those in together. They're kind of like the preview before that one line. And the long E, this one's great. Besides the lake beneath the trees, fluttering, dancing in the breeze. Right, so I love this one, especially because um, the spelling for the E's are different. And that shows you again, it's about sound, not spelling. And that just opens up a whole, all these words you can use to create the musical tone you want without being stuck with just the words that rhyme. Okay, the next one, consonants, is the repetition of consonant sounds. So. This way you can remember because consonants has consonant sound. You can see that in the spelling here. It's almost the same. Whereas assonance, I try to remember because it begins with an A and A is a vowel. So that's the one for vowels where consonant sounds like consonant. So it's a repetition of consonant sounds, particularly at the end or middle of a word in a line of poetry. So make sure you write that down. And here is the example. He thrusts his fists against the posts and still insists he sees the ghost. So what's unique about this is that this one has the ST sound. Um, you could even add some other S's there, but to know that 
there's a lot of different consonant sounds out there than just um, the alphabet. Sometimes we combine letters to make blends, and those blends can be their own um, repetition. So now we're jumping to the end of that poem we read before about by William Wordsworth. Um, it's a great poem, so if you want to read the whole thing, go ahead. You'll find it easy. It's I wandered just I wandered lonely as a cloud, but this is the last stanza. For oft, when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon the that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. So the S consonant is pretty clear here. Most of them are spelled the same. Um, one that I missed, I would say in pensive mood, I think that kind of begins it. And remember, you would not include sh because that's different than the S sound. And that's the same reason down here with pleasure because that S is actually a zh sound there, so it's not consonants with the other S's that are making this sound. Okay, now I want to move on to uh, a song that includes all three of these, and I want you just to listen and see if you can hear how the poet is using all of these. Now, this is one of my favorite rap songs from the musical Hamilton. Um, I'll be using a lot of examples from the musical Hamilton because Hamilton was the musical in which I learned how to find assonance and consonants, and I learned how important it was. So this poem's called Guns and Ships. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Tag volunteer army in need of a shower somehow defeat a global superpower how do we emerge victorious from the quagmire leave the battlefield waving Betsy Ross's flag higher yo turns out we have a secret weapon an immigrant you know and love who's unafraid to step in he's constantly confusing confounding the British henchmen everyone give it up for America's favorite fighting British man So their balance shifts. We rendezvous with Rochambeau, consolidate their gifts. We can end this war in Yorktown, cut them off at sea, but for this to succeed, there is someone else we need. I know. So he knows what to do in the trench, ingenuity, and fluent in French. I mean, so you're gonna have to use them eventually. What's he gonna do in the bench? I mean, no one has more resilience or matches my practical, tactical brilliance. You want to fight for your land back? Give my right hand man back. Get your right hand man back. No, you gotta get your right hand man back. I mean, you gotta put some bones to the letter, but the Alexander Hamilton, troops are waiting in the field for you. If you join us right now, together we can turn the tide. Oh, Alexander Hamilton, I have soldiers that will yield for you. If we manage to get this right, they'll surrender my early I hope you enjoyed that song to see alliteration, assonance, and consonants. Um, I have a small activity for you guys to do with all three of these, so I'll explain that in a new video. Have a good day!